Hey, everybody, it is another edition of YouTube Live here on the Everything Phoenix channel. We are discussing the economy, the housing market, specifically in Arizona. And is it rock bottom? Has it hit rock bottom? Is it now time to jump in and buy a house or maybe wait? That's the uh, the question everyone's asking. And there's like a thousand different ways you can phrase that question, right? Because at the end of the day, that's really what everyone's asking. So we're going to address today here with data and data specifically. Um, is it the rock bottom for the Phoenix area? Guys, I mean, obviously the rest of the country matters, but for us, it really doesn't. We're, this is a Phoenix, Arizona YouTube live channel. And so, you know, it's all about that for, for all intents and purposes. So we're going to dive in today um, and discuss and look at data that would, that would maybe support or deny um, the fact that this is a rock bottom, um, you know, or we've already reached rock bottom for a housing economy. And if you then therefore should make a decision to jump in and buy or rent and wait. So that being said, uh, if you could just subscribe and get this out to more people, guys, just go ahead and share it, share the love. And if you could let us know where um, you are um, listening from, that'd be great too. We'd love to see where you guys are. And uh, and if you're going to watch the recording, please comment below and let us know that as well. Ask questions. This is interactive. We want to get going and we want to make sure that we are providing value to you. Your time is valuable. Same as everyone else's, I think, maybe even more, right? Because you're a listener and subscriber for this channel. And so um, we really appreciate you guys. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to jump into a couple of things right now. All right. So um, here is some verbiage, which is not as cool, but here's a little, little article or a little uh, visual for you with a um, a graph, guys. The monthly average sales price per square foot. You can see it right now on my cursor here, and it's going in the right direction. It's not just the amount of inventory or listings increasing or demand increasing. The proofs in the pudding from the sales price per square foot is actually been increasing steadily from the end of the year. You can see down here, beginning of January, end of December was um, at this point, for all intents and purposes, the bottom in the short term for the real estate market here in Phoenix, okay? But what else will support this? Well, let's look at the commentary here because this is important. Now I know it's kind of small and it's not as fun to just read or listen to someone reading, but I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm gonna give you the snippets of this, right? Because this is interesting in terms of what data will suggest and what the media or what, you know, will, will suggest, right? So let's, just, let's leave it at that. So here we go. The majority of people seem to assume that the rise in mortgage rates over the past five weeks have will, will have caused home buyers to reconsider and delay their purchases. Okay, now, before I read any further, I want to actually back up for a second. What am I reading from? I'm reading from the Crawford Market Report. All right. Um, the Crawford is the leading uh, economist in the uh, Phoenix housing market specifically. Right. Not Tucson, not Las Vegas, not anything else, but Phoenix and not, you know, uh, just general economics, but specifically for the housing market. It tracks all the data that's possibly available so that you can make the most informed decision. And what's interesting about the data, whether it's good or bad, or whether you want to believe it or not, it's just raw data, and it's going to give you a picture as to where we currently stand in our market currently today, as opposed to what we feel like it should be, right? So um, this is what we're, and by the way, I always say this, follow the money, right? Follow the money. You know, um, the media, uh, they have to sell advertising spaces, right, on their, their website or TV or radio. Um, the Crawford Report. Re report. How do they make their money? Because is there a hidden agenda? Is there an angle behind them that's going to actually make them want to say or skew their data, if you will, or their opinion of the data one way or the other? And the answer is, is I don't believe so. And here's why. If you follow the money, they make their money from subscriptions of real estate professionals like myself that obviously work the Phoenix, Arizona area. So do they make money from advertising? No, they are fully funded based on the agents who take their business very seriously and therefore want to know the most cutting edge data and the interpretation of data, a non-biased interpretation of data and, and roll with it so they can inform their clients um, that the micro niche data um, uh, of what's really happening. So they don't have to read a headline on you know a, a general website or a news channel and therefore think this is happening everywhere because sometimes and most times it's not a lot of times it's just the opposite but you may not you know hear that until the media catches up with it if they ever do and that could be weeks or months down the road so because if you follow the money 
you don't have to really believe, in fact, you shouldn't believe that the Cronford Report has anything but an unbiased interpretation from an economic mind at heart. Now, that's a kind of a boring phrase to say, right? But it's true. And so if that's true, then, then you can actually understand what the spin, if there was one or isn't one, of the person interpreting, interpreting the data may be. And so here we go. I think this is about as raw as it gets from an unbiased source who doesn't have to sell advertising spaces. All they have to do is just give the data and realtors who are serious about their business should subscribe and pay a monthly fee like I do to just continue to be um, someone who receives that data to then give it to their clients. All right. That's my rant. That's the backup of that's the backdrop of the Cromford Market Report. So I think it's important to know that so you know who's why this person or, or who's the person saying their opinion, their interpretation of the data. So here we go. Back to this uh, the screen. All right. So um, the next sentence. While there may be some or maybe or even many who have done just that, reports from new home sales offices suggest that orders have stayed remarkably strong. Sales incentives are not being raised, and I fear that the result will be another shortage of homes to buy within just a few months. The reason I have this fear is, is that new home construction permits have been extremely few in number and trending lower. Indeed, January's permit count for single-family dwellings in Maricopa and Pinal counties, and guys, Maricopa County is pretty much the entire greater Phoenix area. Pinal has um, um, some attachments to the Phoenix area, the greater Phoenix area, with um, Florence and Santan Valley and that sort of thing in the south um, east part of the greater Phoenix area, but minimal. Most of it is all Maricopa County, okay? They numbered just 1,102 permits, okay? Following the, the, the even more dismal count of 997 in December under 1,000. These numbers are down from 3, the 3,000 level during most of the second half of 2020, all 2021, and the first half of 2022. Then what happened in the second half of 2022? The market started to wane, interest rates spiked, demand went down, and therefore builders started stopped um, uh, applying for permits. Okay, Yet new home closings are currently down only 5% year over year. Let me repeat that. New home closings are currently only down 5% year over year in Maricopa County, and order books are filing or filling up. Excuse me. It is obvious okay, from these trends that new home builders are not starting enough homes to replace the ones that are going under contract. We all know that story is likely to end. We all, we all know how it will, right? New homes have been gaining market share over resales, but this will come at a grinding halt if new home supply runs short. At the moment, new builds are a dominant force in the market, but they will only remain so if we see permits climb much higher in the next few months. Meanwhile, here we go. The media are getting it all wrong. Okay. Witness the story in the Wall Street Journal. Housing mar market momentum stalls as critical spring season approaches. So um, you can see right here, here's the article. And, you know, rise, here's the subtitle. Rising interest rates um, squeeze affordability. Drive mortgage applications to its lowest level in decades. Now, nationally, guys, here's the point. Nationally, this is true. I don't think the Wall Street Journal is lying. Those stats are true. But their interpretation of it is a could that be a little bit of clickbait? I think so to an extent. Um, but but part of that is true. Mortgage applications are declining because that's just what happens when rates go up, and they've been going up the past several weeks. In fact, here is the reliable source that I love, Mortgage News Daily, and it talks about you know the most recent articles, what's going on with with rates. But let's look at the graph here. Okay, right now, seven oh two. Okay was where it was yesterday, and today it's at 7 on the 30-year fixed, and the change was in the positive, meaning it was going down. So that's good news because the last two or three days was not good news. The rates were increasing and increasing and increasing. So a little bit of a decrease here, down to 7, still still high by most recent standards. Obviously, historical norms, still pretty low. Um, so that's, that's what the Cromford Report is suggesting here, that they are talking about um, you know, the media selling that housing market momentum stalls. Okay. Now this is now nationally that could be happening too, but this is Phoenix, Arizona guys. And we have a lot going for us, um, which is making this a little bit different than other cities across the country. Here we go. There is a widely held belief, by the way, this commentary was just yesterday, just yesterday, March 8th. Okay. Um, that rising interest rates always mean falling demand for the most part, but not always. This is sometimes true, but sometimes often untrue. 
Housing affordability gets worse when interest rates rise, but if the buyer's perception is that it may get worse in the future, this brings on a fear of missing out FOMO. You guys heard of FOMO, right? And a desire to buy right now before rates rise even further. This appears to be what we are seeing, particularly in the new home market. If it all, if also, it also follows that what buyers want um, is a house that can they can buy quickly while their rate is locked. Because obviously in the future, guys, if the home takes six months to build, you you really can't ro ro uh, lock a rate six months in advance. So then you get the worry and the lack of uncertainty or la lack of certainty, I should say, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, we are now closer to a six percent target after the rate has been bought down because a lot of homeowners are buying homes uh, rates down. Uh, buyers who are actually looking realize what is going on and fear that if they wait too long, they may be looking at a seven percent rate bought down from an eight percent rate. They hear what Jerome Powell. The uh, Fed chairman is saying, and, the, and it only reinforces, reinforces, excuse me, their their FOMO. Okay, last year we suffered from FOBAT, fear of buying at the top. I love that FOBAT, which caused demand to collapse and prices to follow suit. People, no one wants to buy at the top. No one wants to, right? Everyone wants to time the market perfectly, and so on and so forth. But uh, FOMO now is where we're at because people are fearing maybe rates will go even higher, and therefore, if I want to buy, let me lock it in right now. And by the way, a lot of sellers right now are willing to give concessions to our clients to bite on their rate um, two per two points in year one, one point in year two, or potentially even a three, two, one buy down where they get three points off in year one, two points off in year two, and one point off in year three. And then of course, back to the fully indexed rate if you haven't refinanced by then. All right. So here we go. Michael, what's going on? Thanks for saying what's up and thanks for listening to our channel. I really appreciate it, Michael. I really, really do. It means a lot. Um, thank you very much. And if you got any questions or comments in addition to that, let us know. All right. So FOBAT, that's my new thing. Fear of buying at the top, right? That's my new acronym. Um, that's where we're at last year. Um, here we go. There are still buyers canceling their new home orders, either in fear or because they can no longer qualify for their mortgage. However, builders are now seeing a cancellation uh, as an asset because they can sell actually for what? a higher price. But I thought the market's crashing in Phoenix. Well, it has gone down about 14%, actually a little over 14% since the height in May last year. Um, however, um, right now, because it went all the way down, we saw it turn up. You can see it right here. This is, these are sales guys. It's not list price homes. It's not sellers that are delusional. These are homes that are selling. And look what's happening with the prices. Zigzag, 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 zigzag. In the last two months, especially a month, I should say, boom, there it goes. Um, so builders know because of, again, lack of supply that if someone cancels because the buyer's scared or whatever, then they can, they, okay, no problem. You can cancel and then they can resell for a little bit higher on the price. They are already short of quick delivery homes, QDH. When these run very low, buyers will probably have to turn to the resale market to fulfill their needs. And what's that going to cause? Well, if a lot of people have a 3% mortgage or lower, it's going to cause Obviously, lack of supply, a lot more demand if the new home builds don't continue on a pace of cranking out new home construction. And therefore, you have prices that will continue to inch up as opposed to going down. So it's interesting, guys, right? Now, March 6th, okay, two days ago, it is possible that you are skeptical when I claim that prices are heading higher. This is an economist, a housing-specific economist for the Phoenix area, specifically saying that in Phoenix, she and he, it's Michael and Tina, think that they are, prices are going to head higher, not lower, higher. List prices have been moving up for several months, but sales prices, not so much. Until now, that is. Look at the daily chart below. Guys, so here's the deal. I would love to get on here and say, hey, um, rates are up. The economy, I don't know. And you know, if I'm going to bet in the next month, let's say, prices are going to come down. Because you guys would all go, all right, this guy's telling the truth. I like this guy's channel. But the reality is that I have to tell you what the reality is. And the reality for Phoenix is what this data is saying because this is not a national news channel. This is this is specifically what's happening for data in the housing economy for Phoenix. So that's my job to deliver that to you guys. And um, and and it maybe is the unpopular opinion right now because, well, he's a sales guy. He's going to benefit if prices go up because people want to buy homes. Yeah, we would love to walk someone through that process and help them. And we do. Obviously, that is our profession at the end of the day. Yet my job is to take the data and share with you directly, not just my opinion of it, and talk to you in this camera, but also show you the data as well so that you can make your own inferences, right? Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Here we go. Um, 
and listing success rate. Look at this too. Here's a, let's just talk about March 5th here. With mortgage rates much higher than four weeks ago, many people have turned to pessimism about the housing market. And guys, pessimism sells. Optimism, eh, not, not as much. However, interest rates are just one of many things that determine how the market behaves. We advise you not to obsess over them, but pay attention to other factors as well. Look at the chart below and you can see how the listing success rate has improved sharply since week four of 2023. A normal market generates a listing success rate of around 65%. A normal market. This is what's true for Phoenix. Whereas we are heading towards 80% consistent with a market where supply isn't able to keep up with demand. Look at this, guys. Right here, this purple line. This is 2023. Now, are we lower than we were in 21, 22, and 20? We are. We are. Yet we are, we, look, at the, look at the curve. We are at a much steeper trajectory on 2023 than we were at 22, 21, and 20. So where this will go, who knows? Now, is this seasonally affected? Absolutely it is. Um, our season matters. Uh, we have more demand naturally in the season because the weather's nice and people, you know, it's maybe colder in other parts of the country. And so people look to Phoenix to come visit and maybe buy some real estate, that kind of thing, right? Uh, yet this curve right here is much sharper than the other three years that were really good real estate years, really good real estate years. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully um, this will continue in, in a good trend. Maybe it'll level off a little bit. They'll still stay, um, you know, stabilized or a little positive. That'd be great. But this is this is the data. The raw data is telling you guys that right now, in the short term, for the next you know probably month or so, um, the opinion is of these economists that the market's going to for Phoenix is going to continue to do well. Not like gangbusters, but it's going to not be crashing anytime soon, right? That sort of thing. Um, I love this here. There's no denying that demand remains weak compared to normal because affordability is poor. Guys, so there you go. I'm going to pause that in a second. Let's just chat for a second. Affordability is not great right now. And therefore, that is part of the reason why prices could come down. Absolutely. But if you look at the, the, the data here, Supply and demand still matter tremendously. And if you still have the demand, whether you, whether it's the affordability is poor or not, because maybe outside money's coming in from California, Chicago. What's up, Michael? I know you're in Chicago. Uh, places that, you know, uh, you know, I mean, every every city, every state has places where there's money, right? It's not just, you know, certain places like Chicago or maybe like, you know, California or whatever. Um, so the people that have the money in those places, they may be choosing to go to Phoenix. And we're seeing that they probably are because even though affordability is poor for the average Phoenician, yet the, the supply is still low and the demand is still higher than that supply. So there's your basic economic condition that we're in right now, causing the little uh, uh, niche uh, market that we're in. And here's the however statement. However, the same factors that make affordability poor also make affor homeowners reluctant to sell their homes. And here we go. Focusing exclusively on the demand side and um, demand side of the equation will make you sad. Okay. Look at, look also at the weakness of supply, which shows no sign of improvement with a decreasing number of homes going on sale. Those that do have an increasing chance of, uh, of a successful sell. Okay. We are recording fewer cancellations and fewer expirations of listings. That means they're selling. This is a positive readout folks. This is a positive readout folks. And it is based on cold, hard numbers, not opinions of how the market, quote unquote, ought to be behaving. To be behaving. I just kind of condense those be and behaving in one word. To be behaving. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, again, the data is suggesting, you know, it's going opposite of what the popular opinion is right now based upon, you know, general economic conditions. So keep that in mind, guys. What's that mean for you? Well, if you're looking to buy a house, maybe it means you get in. If you can, if you can uh, qualify. I, I'm a big fan of being able to qualify at the fully indexed rate of where it stands today. So if it's at seven and three eighths, can you qualify and make that monthly payment at seven three eighths? Yes or no? If you can, and then with that, we can help you negotiate or whomever help you negotiate a buy down of your rate, temporarily temporary relief, seller pays for it, and now you have a much more affordable monthly payment. And hopefully the idea is that rates will go down at some point in the next 12 months, especially in the next 24 months. Um, although let me disclaimer, that's not guaranteed, but if you look at the cycle and so on and so forth and what the smart money's saying and blah, 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 then it should be, that should be happening. Then you refinance out of it and you never really have to make the payment at the seven and three eighths rate number. If that makes sense. That's happening a lot right now. Okay. In Phoenix, a lot. And so buyers have that leverage, even though 
the supply is lower and demand is a little bit higher than, than uh, supply, you know, demand is also not normal levels. Okay. So I hope you guys understand what we're, what we're getting at right now. And you can make an informed decision. Maybe you want to rent for a short period of time. Um, I would just say this, remember when you're renting, you're paying 100% interest, not seven and three eighths, not seven and a half, 100%. Okay. So, you know, you just want to just remember that. And, um, and, you know, but, but it could be good for some people. There's no doubt about it, right? Homeownership at certain times is not great for everyone. That is for sure. Um, but I am a big believer of it. Now let's jump over that, over to that really quick, because here's my rental rates. We talk about rentals. What is that doing? Is that crashing? It is not. You can see right now that we had this huge run up over the past, oh man, what is it? Go back 2015. Just, it's just a constant increase of rental prices. Guys, let's be clear. Before 2015, rental rates were low. Phoenix was undervalued for rental rates. It just was for major city with everything that it has going for it. It was. It, this this was going to happen. I saw it coming uh, because, I mean, you can rent something for extremely cheap, you know, prior to 2015. And um, holy cow, it just it just took off to, to where now it's more in line with other major cities that are somewhat like Phoenix and what it has to offer. But right now we're at $1.34 a foot across the board. And you can see this is early 22, okay, March, right? Year over year, 135, and now we're at 134, right? To January, 2023. So if you go to January, 2022, we're, you know, it's, it's pretty much held even now for a year. I do think we're gonna see a leveling off of the rental rates. I don't think we're gonna see a crash. Could it go down a little bit? Possible. But I think we're going to be in this leveling off period for quite a while with rental rates, because again, we have such a uh, influx of population compared to uh, an outflux, and that's with, with so much development going on, which we always cover on this show. So you guys don't have to take my word for it; you can see what's actually happening here locally. So that all being said, um, if rates, rental rates are not going to crash, people have to live somewhere. Do you rent and pay a, a good a good price on the rental rental side. I mean, if you look at my calculator here, guys, if you look at, you know, $1.34 on average, okay, 1.34, and the average, uh, you know, home is about, let's call it 2,000 square feet, that's $26.80 a month in rent. That's not cheap. Now, obviously, you can go cheaper than that, right? And go like, you know, a smaller house, 1,500 square feet times 1.34, okay? That's uh, around $2,000 a month. So on some of these properties that um, you could buy right now uh, with the rates being, even at seven point, you know, seven and a half or seven, if you can buy it down, especially you're going to be under that number in many, many cases for that same size of home in certain, in most areas of the Valley. So again, another argument for potential, you know, home ownership over renting. All right. Now let's go check out this graph here. Cause I, I haven't done the gauges with you guys for a while. I think it's kind of cool, kind of important because if you recall watching this live uh, YouTube lives on our channel here from uh, you know, the second quarter, yeah, second half of, of 2022, you can see that a lot of these were in the red. Phoenix were, were in the red, right? CMI, you guys know the CMI. I'll put this up here again. Now you know uh, what's going on here. The Crawford Report balanced market is being 90 and 110. So Phoenix right now is at 159. Is that a seller's market or a buyer's market? That's a seller's market, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, buyer's markets are in the red, okay? So 159 is a, is a somewhat strong seller's market go figure that but that's where it's at just data guys not my opinion you know this is data over drama right here right um this is not the young and the restless or days of our lives this is everything phoenix youtube live all right so there's phoenix and let's check out the higher price point areas of the valley let's go i don't know let's go to scottsdale that's a higher price point let's check out that see where we at 127 okay still a seller's market let's go to paradise valley which is the most expensive real estate in the phoenix area 127, almost the exact same. Um, let's check out Gilbert. Gilbert's a higher end um, community, or I should say suburb. 145, same as Chandler. 190, wow, 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 wow. Fountain Hills, 181, very strong. Cave Creek, 130, okay. So they're all sellers markets. Now let's go to the ones that were traditionally struggling. All right, that's like Buckeye on the outskirts, a little lower end uh, in terms of price points. 65, it's increasing, but it's still at 65. So it's a buyer's market. Let's go to Queen Creek, 82, okay, still a buyer's market. Gold Canyon, Gold Canyon is a little different because there's not as many homes there. The sample size is much smaller. Cool place to, to, to call home if you like to golf and hike, do outdoor activities, and don't have to be, you know, um, commuting to some, some place, you know, office every day. But that's 155. Uh, how about Levine? 142, good year, a lot of development going on, good year. It's creeping back up. It's a balanced market now. And let's check out one more. Let's go to Avondale, 158. 
Ooh, Avondale coming in strong. Tempe, 133. So guys, the markets across the board are, are, are clearly showing that data over drama says that we're in a balanced two sellers market in almost all of the Valley, guys. Pretty crazy. All right. Now, as you know, what drives a lot of stuff is jobs, economics, development. So we always give you a little taste of that. Let's jump over to this article right here from the Phoenix Business Journal, which is some development stuff. We'll, we'll touch these quickly, guys, because and, and spend some more time on one of these articles. Okay. But this one here, um, again, California based company developing almost 500,000 square feet of industrial buildings um, in East Mesa. All right. By the uh, airport, by the Phoenix Gateway Airport right here, submarket is a big, booming, growing market. Where is that? Here's a visual for you. It's right about here, Hawes and Pecos Road area, just south of the Phoenix Gateway Airport. I'm going to zoom out. You see the airport right there? Um, Allegiant Air flies in there uh, directly to this airport as a commercial carrier. And of course, private does as well. But you can see, if I go to the really map, you can see where we're at. So we're talking about the airport being right there. There's that development. And this whole, off the 24, this interstate right here, this all is the, the corridor, the technology corridor area, they kind of call it, right? Um, where a lot of industrial and data centers and that kind of stuff is brand new stuff is being built and in roads and infrastructure. So pretty crazy the development that they're trying to do that they are doing at the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. By the way, this the the, the second most uh, the second largest employment center in the valley is the Scottsdale Airport, which is right here. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. You see the runway, maybe on this Scottsdale Airport right here. Okay, you see it? And that is what they're trying to do with a gateway, Phoenix Gateway Airport area right here. Make another huge employment area down here in East Mesa. So if you're looking to buy a house, um, you know, from an investment standpoint, whether you want to live in it or not, great place to be down this area. You got East Mark, which is a huge development. I mean, this is huge development. East Mark right here um, of, of just a boatload of new homes and new construction going on right now as we speak and plenty of people living there already. All right. So, and then we have some new restaurants. We'll talk about, you know, uh, Body Fit Training Studio is opening a big deal. Um, you got a whole new huge um, high-end bar in downtown Phoenix. Now Massage, Freddy's Frozen Cus uh, Custard and Steak Burgers, which is really great for fast food, by the way. They're opening new locations as well as Red Robin and Bachi Italian Bistro, okay? Now, let's jump over here. This is the one I want to spend a little bit of time on because this is interesting. Some of you guys like the high-end stuff, especially, or that, you know, the luxurious taste. Okay, let's go back to the map. This is the Ritz Carlton Scottsdale uh, PV. Now, this is where is this located? This is here is Paradise Valley, right? There is Camelback, and we're going to get the uh, um, satellite view for you. Camelback and Mummy Mountains. Here's Camelback. There's a Phoenician resort, which is world class. Uh, Mummy Mountain. Here's Lincoln Drive. Right over here on Scottsdale Road, you have. The Ritz Carlton, guys. This place is this whole development right here. Okay, see all this dirt they're developing, um, and this is the development we're talking about right here because this is a five-star, super high-end residential, full-time residential community as well as a, um, a Ritz Carlton that has been designed. You see some uh, photo right there. I did another video on this this Ritz Carlton project about a year ago. So if you go back and look at that, you can see what some of the footage was of the construction back then, which is kind of cool. And now. This, this is talking about how some of the homeowners of these luxury estates are getting a little upset because they keep pausing and then restarting the project because of financing issues. It's a $2 billion project. Yes, billion with a B. Ritz-Carlton Paradise Valley Resort. And then they they, they sell, sold a bunch of condos too. Um, five stars developer. And then let me uh, give you the, the skinny on it here. Okay. Um, construction is nearing completion for the first group of the 80 Ritz-Carlton villas. And there's only one left for $6.1 million. One left out of 80, all right? And then there's 32 single-family estate homes, they're called. And they are starting at the $8 million mark. Hello. I mean, phenomenal development. $8 million for a house in there. Um, all right. Now, what's interesting is you have a lot of shopping there. You have the Ritz-Carlton, of course, but you have shopping. You have the Palmer District, which has some shopping and, and restaurants. Um, anchored by a Rome, Italy-based Fendi private residence building. 
41 luxury condos averaging 3,500 square feet uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the Scottsdale side of Palmer. Why is it on the Scottsdale side? Guys, guys this, this development um, runs right on the heart of the border of PV, Paradise Valley, and Scottsdale. It's on the Scottsdale side because PV has height restrictions where you can't go over certain height. Scottsdale has taller ones on the height restrictions because of fire department issues and, and ladders and that kind of thing. And that Fendi building, guys, is going to be special. I had talked to one of the reps, and the rep said that um, anybody who buys in there, they basically start, the designers start with yes. That's what they say. You know, hey, can we have? Yes. Hey, can we do? Yes. Right? That's pretty much what their motto within somewhat reason, of course. But if you have any questions about these 41 private residences, guys, please give us a call. We would love to help you out. They're going to start sales on these um, later on this year. So if you're interested in being a owner of a Fendi real estate project, which is going to be, I think, the second or maybe the third, that's it. I think there's one in Miami. And then, of course, there's um, one in Rome. Um, that's it. Then let us know. We'd love to give you more information and help you through that process of purchasing a Fendi residence in the Fendi building. And what's really cool about the Palmer Project, guys, it, here is that to be a restaurant, to qualify to be a restaurant in the Palmer district, right there, walking distance with the Fendi building and the Ritz Carlton, the qualification is you cannot have another location in the state of Arizona. Interesting, right? They want high end, unique, boutique to Arizona restaurants that uh, don't exist anywhere else in the state. So that's the qualification. So that's going to be a really high end uh, place to go dine. If you're in town, you certainly visit that, that Palmer district once it's done, of course, which is going to be a little bit longer. All right, let me go back to my screen share. And um, let's, uh, uh, let's talk about a few more development things and we'll wrap this thing up. All right. Out of state developers uh, plan thousands of build to rent units in Metro Phoenix. Guys, this is the new thing. Uh, this concept actually started in Phoenix. Uh, it originated in Arizona and taking the country by storm. So 2,000 build to rent units across Metro Phoenix are um, in the stage of developing. Uh, some in, uh, in Avondale and Phoenix um, proper as well. So um, guys, this is what they do. And what's interesting is because they know of the baby boomers are getting ready to retire. And a lot of them don't want the maintenance of rental homes. Uh, they are actually doing build to rent. So brand new construction. Um, sometimes they're detached, sometimes they're not. Um, but they're, they're, they're your rental place that are built to just do that. It's kind of interesting, right? Interesting concept. And now it's starting to take the, the southern states, Texas as well, by storm because a lot of people are retiring, but don't want the headache of the maintenance and the responsibility of homeownership, but they want new or something somewhat new. And here comes the build to rent. Um, type projects. So they're doing really well across the country and Phoenix um, has plenty of those on their way. So if you're looking to retire and looking to not do home ownership for whatever reason, this is a good option. All right. Um, last but not least, we have a couple things here. I'm going to say this one for last. Um, there was a, uh, to speak, speaking of the Arizona housing shortage, if you don't believe me, based upon the earlier Cronford report data, check this out. This is a uh, uh, an article in the, in the journal. Uh, the Arizona has a housing shortage of about 270,000 for sale and rental units, according to a study by the Arizona Department of Housing. So what they're trying to do is, is do some rezoning, change some of the rezoning laws and legislation so that they can maybe be a little more um, lackadaisical on getting some um, residential living projects built. So that way they can hopefully um, be able to keep up with the demand of housing for Arizona. Very, very important. So anyways, that's where we're at on this. Guys, look at this. Arizona, one more time, has a shortage of housing of about 270,000 for sale and rental units, according to a study by Arizona Department of Housing. And that's why, you, one of the reasons, another reason is why you, these, these stats here from the Cronford Report right here are even more and more believable, even though the national media might tell you something else. Interesting, right? I think it's fascinating. So I'm going to show that, share that with you because that's very, very important. Again, just raw data. And so if we aren't pulling permits and getting more houses built, we're going to continue to see prices stagnate, if not go up, because we just don't have the supply. Simple economics, guys. All right. Last but not least, this is interesting. So a taste of home. This is a Taiwanese gentleman who um, has been transplanted here to, to North Phoenix. And why is that happening? Well, this guy's been here for a long time. He owns a Taiwan, uh, Taiwanese bakery. However, it's happening because of what? The TMSC project. And you can see right here, TSMC, um, they have a huge uh, microchip, right? Um, uh, 
project going up. I mean, huge in North Phoenix. This is the um, the area of town right off the 303 and I-17. And uh, North Phoenix is benefiting tremendously from this project going in. Um, and so here we go. Although ASU, Arizona State, produces a lot of engineers, in fact, it is the largest engineering school in the U.S. with a student enrollment of 30,000 last fall. Guys, I didn't even know that until I read this article, that Arizona State is the largest engineering school in the country. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, TSMC will need more than that, um, what the school is producing, and will be looking to hire employees globally, um, who Laura French here says, who's the government relations for TSMC in Arizona. So guys, they're looking for top talent. If you know of someone who is an engineer who wants to live in Phoenix, this is a pretty good opportunity. Uh, let's be honest about that. TSMC is going to be around for a long time, and they are on a hiring spree, and they will continue to hire as they continue to build out the facility of the plant. Um, but this is interesting. You know, you don't think about um, people relocating to Arizona from you know the the Asian theater, right? That part of the world, because we don't we don't that traditionally have a huge population of, um, of Asians buying residential real estate, at least. Uh, matter of fact, it's not like LA. It's not like LA. It's not like Seattle. It's not like Portland from that standpoint. But I think this is one aspect, along with many other positives, that are going to probably start a lot of Asian money coming to Phoenix, potentially. So this is interesting, something to watch out for. Okay. Um, many workers who were resigned to uh, from Taiwan will only stay for three to four years to ramp up operations for the TSMC huge microchip plant. But some may live in Arizona permanently and raise their family in the U.S., adding to the growing multiculturalism in Phoenix. Over the past year, these new residents have arrived in several charter flights from Taiwan to Phoenix Sky Harbor, with the latest landing on March 7th, with a few hundred more Taiwan and U.S. workers in tow. Um, and then, of course, when they get here, they have, to, they have to try to figure out, you know, other Taiwanese people and the culture and assimilate, and then, of course, but keep their own culture as well. And so what that means for the area for Phoenix, Peoria, and Glendale um, is fairly significant. You're going to see a lot more presence of Asian culture in that area of town, the valley. You're also going to see real estate prices continuing to probably at least uh, uh, hold steady and then probably even go up long term, especially because of the demand that not just TSMC is bringing to the area, but also guys we get to remember are that all the suppliers, all the industrial suppliers are now building facilities and plants to supply the parts for TSMC, and they're going to make them fairly close by. So that's interesting as well. So it's driven demand, real estate prices going through the roof, um, and uh, and and obviously people like the, this bakery owner who's been here for a while love it because a lot more of his culture and his people are starting to come to the Phoenix area. So interesting to see how that plays out. But it says right here, North Phoenix will drive Asian retailers, restaurants, and services. Um, thanks to the TSMC. So interesting things uh, happening here in Phoenix, guys. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching this, this show. I won't take any more of your time. But what do you think about all this? Is it good stuff? Is it value? Hopefully, it's somewhat entertaining. I know I talk fast, but I have a lot of information I'm trying to get out to you guys so you're fully informed because that's what Everything Phoenix, this YouTube channel, is all about. So if you're watching the replay, comment below. Let us know where you're watching from, guys. And I appreciate everyone who's commenting and, and, and watching. It uh, means a lot to me. And I'll continue to provide value as long as you guys are getting value out of it. So like us, ring that notification bell, subscribe. And until next time, have a wonderful week.